how do things change when it comes to looking at muscle health as we get older? Do we need to look at modifying and including more protein? We're going to be less active. You've talked about the fact that it's almost this balancing act between our exercise resistance training and our protein intake. So if we're going to be naturally exercising less as we get older, I'm assuming we could take in more protein to balance that out. Let's get into the the later years and how this becomes applicable to people at that that tail end. I mean, I think you characterized it pretty well. Um, you know, I, you know, like I said, was at the gym earlier today, and I still practice resistance exercise at least three times a week. So, you know, I I think that seventy year olds can do that. You know, eighty and ninety maybe not so much, but simply body weight exercises, going up and down stairs, getting out of a chair, those kinds of things are important. What we really don't know is that, you know, is is protein at, um, you know, 1.4 grams per kg okay for a 50-year-old and it should be 1.6 at a 60-year-old and 1.8 at, we don't know that. Uh, The research has been done basically a young person and an old person. And that old person could be 55 or 65 or 75, but we haven't done it by decades. And I'm not sure our research methods are good enough to do that, actually. Uh, There's certain aspects of the research that are still fairly crude. So um, does it get higher? Um, Everything that I know is that you know, as you get into 40s or older, 1.5, 1.6 grams per kg is a good target. And I think that's true uh, of a 75 or an 80 year old. The big difference is, as we know for 100% certainly your calorie needs go down. So where a 40 year old might get along pretty well with 2,300 20, calories per day, an 80 year old might very well only need 1,400. So you still need 110 grams of protein and half the calories. So your nutrient density, whether, you know, your vitamin C, your vitamin D, all of your nutrient requirements are basically the same as far as we know when you're 80 as they were when you were 40, but you need a lot less calories. So that's the real challenge. And what we find is that most 80 year olds just decrease their whole diet. And so they're getting a lot less protein. Well, I can see how that would become challenging, especially as somebody gets older with the current landscape of the way we eat, because even talking about eating the amount of protein where we've been discussing for a 35, 40 year old is going to be a dramatic change for a lot of people. And then as we get older, like you're saying here, we still need to keep that same gross amount of protein. We're going to have to lessen through the other macros. So I can imagine that would take a little bit of finessing and and experimenting to figure out how to get that to work. It brings in the issue of shakes and things like that. So as my parents got older and I saw those exact patterns, uh, I introduced them to protein shakes. Yeah, I said, you know, well, when you're having your lunch or your breakfast or your dinner, uh, here, have a shake. You're at least half of shake. You know, if I'm giving them a 30 gram shake and they're having whatever, their breakfast cereal or something, and they're getting... 10 or 12 grams of protein from that, if they can put 15 more grams of protein from a shake in with that meal as a drink, uh, that's very functional. One one of the things we know is that, uh, you know, as they get older, chewing and, you know, older individuals don't like to chew meat, you know, really dense protein. It's just harder to deal with. Um, And so, You know, things like dairy products and shakes and eggs and things become much more viable and, and, you know, isolated protein. So as you said, it's a, it's a real challenge uh, as to how to, how to get, you know, a hundred plus grams of protein into a 75 or 80 year old person. We, we struggled. Our weight loss studies were predominantly women between about 28 and 65 and, we, it was a continuous struggle to keep the higher protein group above 100 grams per day. That, that's a struggle. Women just don't like to eat a lot of protein. And we know from the NHANES data in the United States, we know that 
women over 65, about 40% are below the RDA, actually below the RDA. And women under 22, between 16 and 22, it's almost 20% are below the RDA. So we know that women in general are very close to the minimum and don't have much margin for error. You've talked a little bit about how you go about eating, but can you take me through what a typical day would look like? When exactly you break your fast and and what your different meals would look like? Because again, as we're talking about this, it will be such a paradigm shift for a lot of people. Like how do you how do you make up your plates? Well, again, when we teach it, and by the way, I have a website called metabolictransformation.com. If people want to see our diets and things, they're there. Uh, so anyway, they can look at it. We also have a protein shake, which is interestingly enough, two thirds plant and one third dairy. So it's a it's a plant blend, primary plant protein shake. It's a meal replacement. Uh, how do we make it up? Uh, well, dinner's real easy. Most people, if they're going to have vegetables during the day, it's at dinner. So you've got your vegetable fruit part, protein part. Most people have a pretty identifiable protein part. And what we then do is put all the carbs into a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you want to have bread or if you want to have pasta or if you want to have rice, one-to-one -one visual relationship with the protein part. So that's a pretty easy meal to construct. Most people can get that right. How do you start the day? Uh, I have basically two approaches. One is a protein shake, which is what I had today. Um, I basically use our shake. So I have a 30 gram shake. You could do it with whey protein. Uh, I use whey protein. I usually use a yogurt. I use, pick a yogurt that has 15 to 20 grams of protein in it. Um, and some carbs, uh, but basically uh, uh, a sugar-free yogurt. Uh, that becomes my base. I put the powders on it. Uh, I put blueberries on top of it. I put in some ice cubes, a little bit of milk for fluid. I blend that up, and I have a shake that you know is ready in three minutes, and it has 45 grams of protein, and it has about 300 350 calories. So that's my breakfast. Um, today I was at the gym for an hour and a half, so I came back and actually I haven't had any lunch today at all. <laughs> and so I'm going to dinner and I'll have, as I described, um, on a day I might have uh, lunch. Uh, I typically would do a salad. So lots of different veggies with meats and cheese and eggs in it to get me sort of in the 20 gram range of but pretty low calorie, uh, lots of fiber, and uh, 20 plus grams of protein. So that's my day. <laughs> my dinner will have 55, 55 to 60 grams of protein. My breakfast is 45 and my lunch is 20. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. It's all about balance and ratios. And so again, you can do it. And there's vegetarians and vegans out there who are very skilled at it, but the average consumer has no clue.